How borrowers and lenders respond to economic conditions and interest rate changes in particular is critical to understanding the economic fluctuations in a country, the reaction to recessions, um, government borrowing, lots of different things. So I want to talk a little bit about how interest rates can change the desire of borrowers to borrow more money or lenders to lend more or less. Now one of the concepts that we'll be using for this is something we've talked about in a separate video is that there's going, there's going to be an inverse relationship between the price of bonds, the price of, of sell uh, that you could get for um, uh, purchasing or, or uh, selling a bond and the interest rates. If the price of bonds goes up, interest rates go down. If the price of bonds goes down, interest rates go up. Now, so before we get into uh, the, the details of this, I want to make sure that you understand how a change in the interest rate would affect a borrower. So let's, let's imagine that I'm considering buying a house. I don't have enough funds to buy it outright. I've got to borrow. Got to buy a mortgage. Got to arrange with a bank to loan me money. The higher is the interest rate, which we call I, the higher the interest rate, the more I have to pay the bank every month for the privilege of getting the funds from the bank today to buy, to have the house that I can live in. So if the interest rate goes up for the mortgage, I'm going to be less interested in borrowing. By the same token, interest rates going up is a way to potentially encourage a bank to lend more. You know, that interest rate is, is really the price of borrowed funds. Okay? It is, it's, it's the interaction between the supply and demand for people that either want to get uh, money from a uh, to, to undertake some activity, to buy a house, to expand a business or whatever. And that interest rate is the thing that will ma help match the borrower to the lender. So the higher the interest rate, the more or the less likely that someone will want to borrow, to buy a house, to expand a business. Now, when we start talking about the macroeconomic consequences of different types of government actions, we need to keep that interaction in mind. So let's imagine, for example, that we've got, we can depict the bond market, okay, the bond market, which is a way of saying the market for what would be called loanable funds. Okay, that's a kind of a, that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's basically the place where the people will want to loan money, or where people go to borrow money. Okay, so this quantity of bonds is the amount of bonds that are offered uh, or demanded in the place where people are trying to borrow funds. And then we've got the price of bonds over here. And again, that's not the interest rate. It's related to the interest rate, but it, the price of bonds is not the interest rate. It's the price of buying or selling the bond. And we've got a supply of bonds I recall from the, the video about uh, what bonds, 
issuing a bond means if I <coughs> am a, for example, a, um, uh, a government and I'm trying to borrow money, I issue a bond, a piece of paper, in order to borrow the funds. Okay, So that supply of bonds is from the person that is trying to borrow. The demand for bonds, the people who are willing to buy the bond, are the people who want to loan the money. So if you were talking about a, uh, a private individual going into the mortgage market, I mean, it's a really kind of a bond. You're, you're promising to pay um, for you know, uh, the, the, the mortgage on this house. So am I, as a borrower, I'm a, a supplying a, a bond, a guarantee that I'm going to pay for this mortgage over time. And the demand for the bonds are the people that are loaning the money. So here we've got a price for the bond. We've got a quantity of bonds in circulation. And what I want to do now is to think about two different policies by the government. So let's say we've got deficit financed government spending. When we talked about fiscal policy, this would be a situation where a government uh, wants to, s to spend more and they need to issue a bond uh, to the private sector. The private sector will then loan them the funds to make the purchases today. So if we have an increase in the supply of bonds that are issued by the government, or for that matter, the, the corporate sector, okay, if, if corporations want to issue more bonds, borrow more money, what you have is that the supply of bonds will increase. Okay, this is really kind of go, goes back to microeconomics where you have a supply and demand for something. The supply of the bonds is from the, from the borrowers. And what you see is that this tends to lower the price of the bond. New borrowers will see a drop in the price of the bond, okay, drop in the price of the bond, the interest rate goes up. The more there is a, su <clears throat> a supply of these bonds, the more uh, the interest rate will rise. So this increase in the government deficit, uh, government uh, debt financed uh, government spending will tend to increase the interest rates. Now let's go back to this thought about what happens to the person that is trying to buy a house or expand a business. This increased supply in the bond market, raising interest rates will make it more expensive for the private sector to borrow funds to buy the house or build a new factory. So there's this negative consequence of the government, government spending, which needs to take need to be taken into consideration. But importantly, increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes, either one. Increase in, uh, a decrease in taxes would result in more deficits, increase in the supply of bonds, price of bonds falling, interest rates rising. Okay. Now let's Imagine a different scenario, a 
different type of government action. Again, we've got a supply of bonds, we've got a demand for bonds, same, same kind of situation that we talked about before and you had an initial price and quantity for the bonds. And then instead of having government uh, spending or a tax cut, instead we have an alternative policy which is monetary policy in particular an open market purchase of bonds. So recall with the, the government spending, we've, in, we've increased the amount of aggregate demand through the direct actions of the, of the government uh, spending, but we had higher interest rates. Here we're going to have a different kind of expansion, which is going to be related to monetary policy. Open market purchase of bonds means that the central bank goes out into the bond market, they will buy up bonds and push out money into circulation in the private sector. Okay? They, they purchase bonds, they take in bonds, shove out money. How does that show up in this depiction? What you've got is a new source of demand or an increased demand. Make this in red. An increase in the demand for bonds because you have the central bank now purchasing them. As a consequence, the price of bonds goes up and interest rates fall. That expansionary government action will result in lower interest rates and cheaper to buy a house or expand a business. So we have these two very different interactions between the expansionary policy and interest rates, which is really important for understanding the macroeconomic consequences of, of these policies. Expansionary fiscal policy Okay, that was increasing the government spending or decreasing taxes. The expansionary fiscal policy result, resulted in an increase in interest rates with the potential negative consequences on borrowing for homes and, and businesses. An expansionary monetary policy results in interest rates falling and expanding borrowing for these pur uh, purchases of homes and, and expanding businesses. So the consequences of these two policies that seem similar, they're both expansionary, have very different consequences on the cost of borrowing. And, and it, it really played an important role in determining what the overall consequences of these policies uh, might be. That is, expansionary fiscal policy or expansionary monetary policy. Very different impact 
on uh, interest rates through the mechanism of the market on borrowing and lending.